welcome to another episode of Rummaging Through Bookshelves. I am your host, Amaya Dharmasiri. Today I have a very special guest once again. His name is Kitmin Vikram Singha. He is a senior to me in my university. He is currently actually a graduate and a research and teaching assistant at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunications at the University of Morocco. Welcome to my show. Thank you so much, Amaya, for having me on this show. Uh, I'm a uh, like huge fan of your uh, podcast and uh, thank, thank you. you for inviting me. <laughs> so just like every other episode, uh, in this episode also, I got the recommendation for a book from Kitminaya, a book that he uh, specifically enjoyed. It is none other than Opening the Doors of Your Heart, written by Ajahn Brahm. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. If you are in search of moments of insights, love and compassion, this is the book for you. Okay, this is actually the first book written by Ajahn Brahmavansa. Uh, he's a English Australian monk and uh, the book's name opening the door to your heart uh, one day like I was going through my mom's uh, bookshelf uh, looking for something and I came across this uh, so I hadn't read Buddhist books before that and uh, mm-hmm. when I went through this book like uh, I could relate to it a lot so that's kind of why it came to my mind when you asked me to suggest a book yeah, I'm I'm really glad that I came across this book because so far uh, my uh, the the scope of books that I quite enjoyed were quite limited actually. I used to read a lot of fictions, you know, adventure yes. sort of stories. Yeah. But then when I when I read it it was a completely new experience and I'm really glad that I did. Yes, that that's that's exactly what I thought too. So this book has 108 stories. Uh, written by this author, Venerable Ajahn Brahmavansa, and uh, giving a little bit of a background about the author. So he was born in 1951 uh, in England, where he actually uh, have gone and studied theoretical physics at the University of Cambridge, which is a very nice surprise for me. Yeah, it's pretty cool, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, having a Buddhist monk study theoretical physics, like something that we are so... uh, passionate about, I'd say. Even like you are very passionate about physics and like having... Someone like that gives these kinds of lessons, it connects to you in a different way, right? So, uh, at the age of 23, uh, Ajahn Brahmavansa has had been ordained and he had spent nine years practicing the forest meditation tradition. I actually watched uh, one video, I, uh, I came across it in YouTube. And the way he, you know, preaches, the way he uh, gives his talks, it's really pleasant to watch. Yes. He's very, uh, you know, light-hearted sort of tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's called the uh, uh, sm- Smiling Monk. Uh, he, had a, he has a nickname, yeah, Blue-Eyed Smiling Monk. He's a very charismatic sort of a, a person. So, um, his, this charisma, his light-hearted nature, his uh, easygoing sort of uh, storytelling, it's kind of embedded in each and every story this book has. It is, it is, yes. Yeah, so uh, this book uh, has uh, different chapters uh, in which he uh, talks about different aspects of our lives. For an example, it has chapters like, you know, perfection and guilt, love and commitment, fear and pain, and uh, anger and forgiveness, etc. Yes. Yes. Where he gives, you know, sort of anecdotes and narratives into d- these uh, different aspects. Today, in this episode, we'll give a small taste of this, uh, these stories to our listeners. I'm pretty sure after listening to these stories, uh, they will also go ahead and read the book. So, uh, the first story uh, Kitmi Naya has selected is uh, the story about two bad bricks. It is uh, in the chapter uh, Guilt and Perfection. So, in uh, Two Bad Bricks, uh, then Ajahn Chah sends Ajahn Bra to uh, Australia to... Uh, sort of support and uh, build the uh, Australian uh, uh, Buddhist monastery uh, that, that they've been doing there. When he comes to Australia, um, 
something happens where they they uh, they want they start to build the Buddhist monastery and uh, he him and his uh, abbot uh, who is uh, like a lead monk uh, they uh, purchase this land and then uh, they like once they purchase the land they run out of money they get broke and uh, since uh, they do not have any money to get uh, laborers and uh, builders to sort of uh, build the monastery uh, what Ajahn Chaham, Cha and his uh, fellow disciples do is uh, they learn how to build and uh, this story i think uh, relates on how uh, one of the like uh, uh, i would say like the uh, learnings they experience and uh, i think it's fully re- relatable to us as university students as well as mm-hmm. anyone else uh, out there uh, who is like uh, working and uh, uh, in a stage where they're like uh, 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 doing something uh, in their uh, lives and their career so yeah. uh, of the the story the like in a short view uh, ajan uh, ajan bra uh, learns how to build he builds uh, he lays uh, bricks basically yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah lays bricks and builds a wall uh, mm-hmm. say uh, with uh, there's a, like 1000 bricks in the wall but uh, he he learns how to like sort of lay them perfectly on top of each other and uh, then uh, sort of build it up and up but after mm-hmm. he finishes the wall he notices that there are two bad bricks in like mm-hmm. two different places and like when he goes back and like views at look at looks at the wall he can like see those two mistakes like as mm-hmm. clear as day and uh, basically he wants to blow up the wall that he's like <laughs> embarrassed of those yeah. mistakes and uh, he just uh, wants it destroyed like he wants it done with because he mm-hmm. he's uh, yeah. he's just focusing on the two bad bricks Mm-hmm. But uh, then one day, uh, uh, but the abbot, like his uh, senior uh, monk, uh, mm-hmm. does not allow him to do that. He doesn't uh, allow him to break the wall, destroy the wall. And uh, one day when uh, he uh, takes one of the visitors of the monastery around, uh, this mon- this person sees the wall and says, uh, oh my God, that's a really nice wall. And uh, mm-hmm. then Ajahn Brahm is like, are you uh, sir, like, uh, quoting him, sir? Have you left your, left your glasses in your car? Are you visually <laughs> impaired? Can't you see those bad bricks which spoil the wall? Mm-hmm. And then uh, the person who the, when the person replies and uh, basically changes his entire aspect of uh, life and uh, everything, he says, yes, mm-hmm. I can see those two bad bricks, but I can also see the 998 other good bricks as well. So the beautiful thing is uh, the, the book relates the story and then that, that's it. I mean... He doesn't go to go another step to interpret what the story says. So it's yeah. up to us to decide uh, what are we going to take out of this story. Yep, yep, that that's exactly true. Well, for me, that was, uh, I think that is actually the very first story I read when I took this book. Yes. And uh, it was, the story was very, uh, it was very relatable. It was something not far-fetched. It's something that we can imagine happening to us. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, just like you said, uh, you and I, when we come to university, we have this all sorts of plans in our heads that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And whenever a small step, uh, whenever we fail to take one small step or whenever a small barrier comes up and we end up with a with one or two bad bricks, it it gets, it, it, affects, it affects us so much, right? Yeah, 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 it, like completely, yes. I mean, like, uh, c- consider, like, uh, a very, very uh, relatable example, like, consider your uh, semester, uh, <laughs> what do you say, semester uh, grading sheet. So, like, yeah. you you have these uh, A's, A pluses and stuff, uh, mm-hmm. but you have a C somewhere, a C yeah. and a, maybe a mine uh, yeah. that messes your head, right? So, the story, the lesson I learned was that... Uh, it- well i think it's a very straightforward lesson yeah. we should like not focus on the two bad bricks but look at the wall as a one one unit yeah one I unit mean, yeah yeah maybe if we look at everything we uh, have achieved from the day we joined university up to now if you look at your improvement in, uh, in that scale the minor mistakes and you know the minor mishaps that you that happened to you might look quite insignificant yeah that actually yes like uh, i mean uh, you get to look at the big picture even even so for me i can look at my big picture today looking back right mm-hmm. so I, I actually i can see i can see those 
two two or three bad bricks that uh, where uh, things didn't go the way i want it's true like the the entire wall has been made even though there are like uh, two or three bad bricks it's a good strong wall uh, one one side uh, thing of this uh, i think it's better to mention like so for relationships also you can apply this good brick bad brick thing right <laughs> exactly uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that's true uh, let's not interpret it too much so that so like there's always it's it's pretty good, straightforward there, if someone w- <laughs> there's a lot of good bricks so don't focus on bad what are the bad bricks yeah. oh my yeah. god yes Ajahn Brahm uh, kind of struck me as a person who has a very open mind about everything, who is uh, willing to adapt uh, to changes. Someone who is uh, who is not you know clinging into these old beliefs, or uh, you know, kind of uh, constrained in uh, social constructs of yeah. different sorts. Yeah. Well, apparently for us, even though in Sri Lanka we have a lot of bikunis, female monks. Uh, Buddhist nuns. Uh, we have a lot of them in Sri Lanka, but apparently in Thailand and in uh, other countries, ordaining a female as a Buddhist monk is kind of prohibited. I mean, yeah, uh, women yeah. are kind of uh, uh, they are not given the chance to uh, pursue their spiritual journey yeah. as a Buddhist monk. So uh, yeah. even the Lord Buddha has uh, preached that male monks, female uh, monks, and uh, the layman and uh, Uh, the lay women, if I may, yes, uh, is the four pillars that hold this Buddhism, this uh, philosophy, uh, is them. So yeah, yeah. even e- even though it it is so, uh, it, maybe in the recent history, this particular uh, right to pursue their spiritual journeys as Buddhist monks have been denied uh, from females. But uh, Ajahn Brahm have taken the initiative, have taken the step by ordaining uh, a, a female monk, and have gone ahead and started this particular project, Anukampa Bikuni project, uh, which yeah. was highly controversial at the time, and he was actually banned, uh, kind of like uh, removed from the yeah. forest monastery he had been practicing from Thailand, so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, uh, like uh, even in this, uh, uh, like when when he was like working on this project, he has like clearly mentioned uh, uh, that uh, he has done the research on this uh, particular topic and why this uh, Thailand had these kind of restrictions uh, against this. But uh, even like uh, with all that research, he has found no uh, like no logical or no uh, clear reason to. Uh, Uh, deny this to bikunis and uh, he has done what he has thought is right and uh, what uh, he has like uh, basically he uh, has seen as the right thing to do and uh, uh, even though it has like cost him this uh, position in the uh, his uh, the the place where he like was brought up as a buddhist monk uh, yes. he has still uh, continued to support uh, what he has believed is right the act itself feels like something truly uh, uh, buddhist in nature to me and he has also uh, at different uh, occasions have supported this uh, lgbtiq communities uh, yep. with uh, with people of different sexual uh, orientations and preference this yes. is pretty much you know it's basically tabooed i mean look at look at uh, buddhist monks in sri lanka i mean even though lord buddha has never you know uh, never preached teachings that discriminate these people based on their sexual orientation you can see it today i yeah. mean it's you can see buddhist yeah, monks yeah. Uh, claiming that it's such a sin i mean you will definitely yeah. go to hell if you <laughs> do this <laughs> <laughs> that's true i mean it's uh, i personally believe that it's time we dug we dig into the roots of the religion Yeah. and see what is right rather than you know blindly following something just even even if some monk claims that it is so i think as uh, learned people it's our duty to actually yeah. see if these things are yeah we can true. actually yeah we can do like uh, the same as like ajahn brahm did uh, we should like uh, if we do the research and if we like sort of uh, instead of like uh, sticking with these uh, 
um, how would you say these constructs and these uh, legal mm -hmm. uh, barriers that have come up uh, like do the actual research and kind of uh, 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 investigate openly on whether these issues uh, are uh, possible whether they are required whether they're relevant and then uh, uh, put that out there yeah i think time yes. for these kinds of things We can go ahead and talk about another story. We can, yeah. Which, uh, which is in the chapter Anger and Patience. Right. I think it's quite relatable to many of us. It's quite relatable to me, actually. I have a slight anger problem. <laughs> uh, when Ajahn Brahm uh, got to uh, go to Thailand and practice this forest meditation uh, practice, uh, they every year they have this uh, 60 day meditation retreat I mean they have to get up at 3 a.m and they have to just yeah. do their meditation yeah. you know walking and sitting and uh, having uh, discussions with the meditation mentors and everything up until 10 p.m where they are when they are allowed to sleep I think this story is about someone a western Buddhist monk uh, who comes to the uh monastery to like do this training uh, so he he is like uh, trying to get through these 60 days uh, on on this like exact routine and uh, believe me like uh, i have no idea the kind of pain he's enduring uh, because it, like i think it takes a lot of mental strength to go through a routine like this uh, yes. so he he so by like uh, week day by day week by week uh, he reaches the 30 day mark and then he reaches the final week and then the final uh, two days and the final day and i think the final day is like a uh, moment beyond anything he's ever experienced in his entire yeah he, life. he, he mentions that he's like physically in pain his back is uh, yeah. hurting his legs are hurting yes and uh, but so yeah. far he has been going through with this with a really you know admirable uh willpower and yes he was somehow making it yeah, yeah. until the last day uh, when he finally finishes the uh, last minute of meditation uh, the mm -hmm. um, how do you say the lead master ra, 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 he, he uh, knocks the gong and uh, gets everyone's attention and he says uh, uh, many monks have uh, made great progress and uh, some of them suggested me to uh, keep this up for two more weeks and uh, he he has really liked that idea, and he uh, has his, he has wanted to extend the retreat. And he said, uh, "So everyone, please carry on sitting for the next two weeks." And uh, <laughs> this, like hearing that at the last second, uh, makes the uh, Western monk uh, like blow out with rage, like fuel and erupt with rage. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he like for the next fifteen minutes, he he has been plotting revenge and all sorts of like murderous uh, actions against all those mm -hmm. monks who have been so un, uh, uncaring and uh, uh, un, uh, selfish, selfish uh, yeah. about his pain and everything and he has mm -hmm. like come up with all these unmonkish plans to uh, murder and yeah, destroy them so like it's a, like all the 60 days 60 days of his mm -hmm. uh, effort and uh, everything he put in he i think uh, for me i feel, felt like he lost all that uh, will the the good willpower and uh, the the everything he developed within uh, 15 uh, quick minutes he he lost everything yes. and then uh, the the interesting ha thing happens next where yeah. at the end of 15 minutes uh, the master ri uh, rings the gong again and then says uh well the retreat is over you all can uh relax now so maybe just like you said like after meditating at a stretch for 60 days all of that effort and everything is down the drain uh, during those 15 minutes where he loses all his uh, willpower and you know purity of thoughts and the compassion he developed everything is down the drain when he actually plots to kill this master who is like not ending this uh, suffering <laughs> yeah uh that i mean like uh, uh i've like in in my life uh, i've uh, tried to uh, uh, sort of uh, how do you say uh, practice patience and things like that because um, i do not know like there are so many occasions where like you need patience uh, be it uh, organizing some sort of event like handling that stress mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing a hardware project like uh, 
like uh, yeah. getting getting everything working even if it fails mm-hmm. and even if it like keeps on breaking and uh, doing weird stuff still like yeah. on, like keep that patience up otherwise like you you, you won't like get to enjoy the uh, reward mm-hmm. if you lose it sometimes when i i need to sort of like go into this state of uh, anger and blood boiling rage i i like try to hold on the patience and like like everything has a reason right like everything happens for some sort of a reason like even here the if the monk uh, if the uh, monk instead of like uh, uh, like going into this blood boiling uh, rage and everything if he like thought like why did the master do this like uh, he mm-hmm. he said he would finish by this time and uh, if he like uh, if he instead of like maybe had faith yeah, if he maybe had, had faith yeah, on made, the master made had faith and sort of like spent those 15 minutes thinking of a reason then instead uh-huh. of uh, like uh, instead of uh, filling himself with like uh, unpleasant and un- oh, unclear thoughts, thoughts uh, he would have like spent the 15 minutes completely uh, uh, unharmed and uh, then he'd find out that the master had tricked everyone like cuz he's doing that every year uh yeah. because uh, like if you can try to understand the reason sometimes it's uh, unnecessary to take on all that rage speaking from my personal experience when i lose my patience it is kind of relieving to you know just burst out maybe shout at someone maybe do something stupid yeah. maybe smash a thing it it feels good at the moment but then you definitely end up regretting it uh so uh yes please uh, so for everyone listening as well like try to like if you can relate these stories to your uh, gain something out of it i think like that would be an amazing uh, tribute to the author and uh, for this podcast as well right yeah, yeah i mean that is one of the biggest thing if i can achieve it so uh, there are a few teachings in this book uh, among the 108 stories he has there are few about happiness uh, finding happiness and nice. uh, you know uh, finding happiness despite the circumstances sometimes creating happiness within you and uh, values and spiritual life and so many so many teachings that we can relate to uh, our lives so one of the things uh, one of the stories that we have picked is this too shall pass this too shall pass is a uh, probably the most familiar and uh, most impactful story that i would draw from so it's a small story not com- like compared to the other stories uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's just uh, there's this prisoner and uh, he when like when he comes into this new prison cell uh, he looks at the wall and he sees this uh, saying that has been etched on the wall it says this too will pass so it's sort of a message from the previous owner of that cell to the new person and uh, these words basically pulled him through uh, his prison life and no matter how hard it got uh, he would always remind and reflect on that inscription and uh, he would remember that this will pass and uh, he basically uh, comes the day comes when he has to uh get out of jail and uh, he uh, regains his life um he uh, gets a job he gets um, he uh, has a family and uh, he uh, like goes ahead in life and he always remembers this saying uh, this to will pass and he has this written everywhere in his bedroom on his car at work and uh, uh every time he enjoys the good times he is never too careless to uh, take it for granted he always remembers like if bad times come mm-hmm. uh, such as when he gets cancer uh, all of these things uh, he faces with a positive attitude and the fact that everything will pass and even his cancer uh, is passed uh, mm-hmm. and like the specialist confirms that uh, his cancer is there no more and uh, on his deathbed uh, he uh before he uh leaves the world he tells his family and his uh, loved ones uh mm-hmm. that uh, this too will pass and uh, those were the last uh, were those uh, words were the last gift uh, he gives his family even before seeing this like reading this story uh these this philosophy 
uh, has helped me personally like a lot lot in my life i have had to like face uh, uh, these uh, so you have you have been a scout right uh, yes yes yeah, you've done scouting and so you have gone on these camps and yeah. had those uh, rough times right uh, yeah no water no yeah, showers no, no sh- yeah nothing right so like uh, there comes a point like uh, sometimes uh, you'd enjoy it but sometimes like you'd be fed up and you yeah, just want you to go yeah you feel like packing your bags and bags and yeah. going home yeah so uh, the only thing that's like uh, keeping uh, that's that could like keep you from enduring that could be this notion that tomorrow or like two days from now you will be home like this will be over yeah. right yes uh, for me like uh, this uh, i have had to face like fat camp and uh, like we had these tough drill exercises like we had to get up every morning and do these mm-hmm. tough drill exercises uh, but uh, uh, you you know that there's an end date uh, there's an end mm-hmm. time and uh, basically you uh, you can like you can make that positive attitude about something you are so depressed or so uh, negative about by like mm-hmm. using this simple thing like this too will pass it's very beautiful i mean the phrase has only four words yeah. this too shall pass yeah. it's such a strong uh, message even though it's four words so it's such a strong message i think it can be applied everywhere and i think this actually goes very deep into the the most fundamental teaching in buddhism which is uh, the uh, temporariness of everything anitya yeah, right yeah 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 so yeah. maybe like all the riches and uh, all the good times we have are also temporary but it also implies that all the bad times we have is yeah. also temporary which means yes. it will it will have to come to an end at some point everything comes to an end yes it has passed Oh uh, have you watched the uh, Shawshank Redemption? Uh no I think it's a very old movie yeah I haven't yes, watched it. Yes it's a it's an old movie and it's a classic so it's yeah. uh, pretty much uh, uh, the same story that this person uh, has been going through it's uh, it's uh, a person who is put in jail uh, the person hasn't actually committed that crime but he is put in jail for life and uh, this guy uh, kind of uh, digs a tunnel through uh, from his wall of his cell uh, and he finally escapes it but the beauty is that he has been digging the same tunnel for 20 years oh while he's God. in uh, <laughs> he's in prison a little by little when everybody is asleep this guy uh, digs the tunnel ah, so I, uh, i mean if that guy has uh, you know given up at uh, some point saying that yeah. it's done i'm here for life maybe yeah. he wouldn't have succeeded i mean he escapes at the end i mean yeah yeah that i mean like uh, you have to have that uh, thing where like you, you have to like see yourself at the in- end of the tunnel one day and then yeah. uh, you have to like uh, like uh, even this in the situation you were in uh, scouting camp where you have to yes. see that day where you at home resting on your bed uh, <laughs> full full of happiness so unless you can focus on that and build that positive attitude this like the mm-hmm. saying this too will pass that's where it comes in right and the yeah. beauty of this small phrase is that you can you can actually remember it and you can keep you know uh, yeah repeating it to yourself actually, like a mantra actually like uh, it this this exact phrase reminded me of uh, some another phrase uh, that i have like come to love uh, in my university career uh, all is well from three exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> i was going to say the same thing yeah in a, in a way words have you know such power right yeah they do Well to be honest when I started this podcast I just like I said I have I had been quite restricted in my selections about books yeah. but now that I get to read uh, so many books from so many different people it is very insightful it's very eye opening for me and this is pretty much the first book I read from this genre and I I would definitely go ahead and read more because yes. uh, it was so warm and it made me feel so good reading this it was so insightful and full of love and compassion yeah there were no i mean even the way uh, ajan brahm look at looks at uh, i mean speaks about the person who the slaughtering of cows at some point there was a story yeah 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 
I mean, the way he talks about this guy who slaughters cows is full of compassion. It's yeah. he's not degrading this man for doing this. He's no. not judging this person for doing this. It's it's a way of life, and uh, the author looks at this particular person in a very human way, full yes. of love and compassion. Yes, yes, yes. That's it's, a, that's true. Yeah. yeah, it's really beautiful. It is for me personally. Uh, like uh, these uh, Buddhist uh, teachings, uh, they've uh, helped me define my way of life. And uh, like I wouldn't say I was like the most knowledgeable Buddhist uh, uh, pr- practitioner, like a follower of Buddhism. But uh, I like I know these little little things that uh, like help me and make me sh- uh, sure that uh, I am a good Buddhist. And uh, this book is like the fact that I can relate to most of the teachings and stories in this book. It makes me um, happy. Yeah. You know, like it yeah. opens the door to my heart. So <laughs> I like, I want like uh, others uh, to actually like, uh, if you can find this book, uh, I think uh, this is available in Sri Lanka in uh, the Buddhist Publication Society. Um, and there and are definitely free uh, PDFs. PDFs as well. Find. Yeah, uh, I think we can share a link maybe, and then yes, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, then and read this book and sort of like uh, uh, reflect on your life in, from these stories and just like open the door to your heart. As well. Find more episodes of Ramage in Apple Podcasts, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts.